Hey everyone and welcome back to the Engineering Toolbox channel. We're going to be continuing on with our SolidWorks tutorial series. Um, this first tutorial is going to be a super basic one for those who have never used it before. I'll talk about the navigation, uh, the layout of the interface, and things like that to familiarize everyone before we dive in. And be sure to stick around to the end where I'm going to show you one of the biggest productivity boosters that I know of in SolidWorks. Alright, let's dive in. <laughs> All right, so when you open SolidWorks, this is what you'll see. Um, and just a quick note, I am on SolidWorks Connected, which is a SolidWorks license, it's a hobbyist license through uh, this 3D experience. So some of the things I'll show you may look a little bit different, but for the most part, this should be 99% um, the same as a typical license to SolidWorks. So again, this is what you'll see when you open it up. You'll see this welcome window. From here, you'll have the ability to open uh, new parts, new assemblies, new drawings. You'll be able to see your recent uh, documents that you might have been working on, recent folders that you might have been in, and then it also has some links to different resources um, that SolidWorks offers. So user forums, user groups, my SolidWorks. If you click on those, you can link out to those things right from this welcome window. So across the top, there's different tabs, uh, recent documents and folders, pretty much the same thing that's on that first home page. Although from here, you can filter by parts, assemblies, drawings, uh, might help you search for recent files. You can also search by name. Um, of recent files. Then learn, it, it'll link out to different tutorials that SolidWorks offers, although let's be honest, YouTube has the best tutorials, so feel free to use those if you like. So by default, SolidWorks has um, three different default templates, a part template, an assembly template, and a drawing template. Um, I'll show you how to set up these templates later on, but these are actually my uh, custom templates that I've built for my uses. So I have part file, assembly file that I typically use, and then a bunch of different drawings. So it also shows this template file, um, or the template folder with the default files that uh, SolidWorks has um, out of the box. Typically I'm using the, the files that I've created. So if I click cancel here, it brings me back to this home page. If I close that, I can bring it back up by clicking this home button in the quick access toolbar. That'll bring up this uh, welcome window again. Then I can also get to new parts and access my templates by clicking new. And again, it'll bring me to my, uh, my templates, or I can access those uh, SolidWorks templates that are right out of the box. You'll probably see this first. So you'll notice I click novice and it brings me to this window. This is what you'll probably see until you click this advanced button. And I highly recommend that you do set up your own templates once you get rolling in SolidWorks. And you'll want to use this advanced uh, tab to access those templates for the most part. So I'm going to click cancel there. I'm going to go back to the home page and I'm going to open up this uh, very simple part and let's kind of get a feel for using SolidWorks and navigating the different buttons. So like I said, very simple part. We're just going to use this as an example to familiarize ourselves with SolidWorks a little bit here. So across the top, like I said, this is your quick access toolbar. You have some different commands and things up here. Um, again, new, open, save as, save, rebuild, which you'll use once you're in assemblies a lot. Um, the options, undo, redo, things like that. Typical Windows program type stuff up there. Um, also typical to a lot of Windows programs, you have your file. So here you can open, save, um, export, do all those different things with um, files through uh, this drop down here. Edit, uh, mostly different ways that you can edit the model itself or the file itself. Um, then view, how to change your view and the layout of your interface, things like that. Insert. This is where it starts to get into features, which for the most part, you're really not going to go up here to access different features and commands. And same with tools, you're, you're not really going to go into here too much, maybe in a few specific situations. But for the most part, everything you need is shown to you through the command manager, which I'll talk about next. So this is the command manager up top. Much like Excel, you have different tabs and different buttons um, and commands that you can run through this top ribbon. So the feature tab, that's where you're going to be creating features uh, to build out your part or to edit your part. Sketches, where you'll find different sketch features, lines, circles, things like that. Surfaces, that's not on by default. So this is something that I added by right-clicking um, on my command manager. And then when you go to tabs, you can see all the different command tabs that you'd be able to add to your command manager on top. So if I were to uncheck surfaces, it hides that surfaces. But since I do sometimes work with surfaces, I keep that on. And this is also contextual, so as soon as I start a sketch, it's going to switch me to the sketch tab. Um, and I'll show you different ways to uh, get to different commands, really common commands, without actually having to go up here, click uh, the sketch tab, and then click on the sketch command. So the next thing I'll talk about up here is the heads up view. So 
a couple different commands up here. I can click zoom to fit and it'll fit that model within the view. I can zoom to an area to look at this area here. Um, if I hit previous view, it'll zoom me back out to the last view I was just on. can also create a section view. So this does not actually modify the part. It's just a view where if I want to see that cross section view of the part, um, I can do that here and I can rotate that or move it in and out um, to be able to see maybe some internal features of the part. So I'll close that. This is the view orientation. So if I were to click this, it brings up this cube where I can look at the top of a part. Um, I can look at the right hand side of a part and I can get all the different views that I might be using. So I really like binding the uh, a hotkey to the base isometric view so that I can just click that hotkey, it brings me back out. And then you can also use the double click on your mouse wheel to zoom to fit. So display style is how your model actually looks. So if right now it's shaded with edges, so it's a shaded model and it has highlighted edges. If I were to take away those edges, this is what it would look like. Um, I can make it a full wireframe. I can show the hidden lines of features behind. So like that, or I can make it a straight up wireframe where it's just showing all of the different feature lines only. Typically, if you're gonna be working with this, and then the hide show items. So these are all the different things that might be built into your model or the model space. Um, so view axes, planes, uh, dimensions, your cameras, your um, different annotations that might be on the model itself. You can show or hide those things at any time with this button here. I can edit the appearance by clicking this appearance button. I can change my part to be red if I wanted to, but I won't do that right now. And then you can apply scenes to the part. So if I wanted to show a different background or you know something to that effect, right? I can apply different backgrounds to my part. And then under view settings, this is gonna edit how the model actually appears. So you can change the perspective, add ambient occlusion, uh, shadows. For the most part, I don't see any reason to have these things unless you're actually trying to give a certain aesthetic look to your model. Uh, when you're doing your work, I highly recommend that all these things are off because they do take additional resources. So let's move over to the right hand side. And this is your task pane. Um, over here, the biggest thing that you'll probably be using is this design library. So the first thing that's in here um, is the toolbox, which is not on by default. I'll show you how to add that in a little bit. But if you, as you get to use SolidWorks, if you're um, you know, using a lot of the same models over and over and over again, you may want to create a design library for that. So, uh, you know, 3D models that you may want to pull into assembly to do other design work around those models or to use those in a design, you can add those to a design library here and build out your own custom library that you can just drag and drop components out of this design library into your assemblies and into your, uh, into your files. So the toolbox is basically just an add-in with a bunch of standard components. So if I went to ANSI inch, bolts and screws, countersunk head, you know, I can see different types of hardware that might be used. And this is really useful for, you know, different fasteners and uh, machine design and fixture design and things like that. So that's definitely an add-in that uh, is worth adding. It comes with uh, standard license to SolidWorks. So I highly recommend that you keep that on if, if you're using a lot of fasteners. So File Explorer, again, you can add um, file locations here that you may want to open files right out of. Um, this task pane on the right. Uh, view palette, you'll be able to see that or access it when you're in a drawing file. Appearance, um, another way to access different appearances and apply different colors and things like that to your model. Custom properties, this is something that I'll probably go through in later tutorials, but you do have the ability to create uh, custom property input forms on the right hand side here. So once this is set up, you can enter in part numbers all of this information will be tied directly to the model, so then when you pull it over into drawing, that information will pull through and you can actually dynamically uh, populate your drawing with that information. So 3D experience files on this PC, this is again, probably gonna be something that's specific to the SolidWorks connected license that I'm on. Same as this 3D experience up here. One thing I forgot to note about the command manager up here is if you're ever looking for a command that you know exists, you just can't find it, um, you can search right here for uh, the different commands that might be out there. If you know a keyword, like in this case, I'm looking for a certain type of extrude. I don't know what it's called. I can't find it. Well, I can search the keyword extrude and then I can either click on uh, this eye icon to take me to where that feature is located in the command manager up here in the top ribbon, or I can just click the plus sign to actually run that command. So then on the left side, you'll see the feature design tree. So this is kind of the bread and butter of where you'll be working a lot. And this tells you what's been done and what features have been added or 
used to create this model. So you can see I use a boss extrude um, to create this cylinder, and then I use a cut extrude to create that keyway, um, essentially. So these two features, you can click on those, you can see the relations that they have. So this is based on that and the origin of the top plane. So you can kind of see what uh, this feature is driving off of and how those relationships are set up. You can see your solid bodies. So really everything about your design will live over here. And this is also where you would go to edit those features um, once you build them out. So also across the top, you have a property manager, um, configuration uh, manager. So in here, say I had uh, three different configurations of a very similar part. This cylinder was just different lengths. Keyway was in the same location. I could build out those three different variations of this part within this configuration manager. And I might set that up with a de design table. This is really powerful. It's definitely something worth getting to know. Um, so also in here, you have the DIM expert manager. Not something I use a lot. I've played around with it a little bit. Um, probably most useful if you're doing a lot of GD&T, you can build that out in the model. So you can do tolerance analyses and things like that and use some of the other features in SOLIDWORKS. And then you can also manage your appearance of the different uh, bodies inside your model um, with this tab here. But for the most part, 90 plus percent of the time you're gonna be working in this feature manager. So the other thing worth mentioning across the bottom is the uh, the status bar. So right now you can see I'm editing a part. If I were to start a sketch, it will say that I'm editing sketch three, for example. So it's going to show you kind of the status of what's going on. It'll show you some dimensions on the XY coordinate system, um, things like that. But I'm going to close that for now. Go back to my model. Um, down here is the units. So right now I'm in inch pounds second unit, so um, English units. If I were to switch this to uh, millimeters, grams, seconds, it doesn't scale the model or anything like that. Uh, the model is unitless. You're just applying or overlaying the units on top of it but it's basically changing the input dimensions or the dimensions that you're using. Um, so it is important to know uh, what units you're in. Say you open up a file that somebody else was working on or something like that. Good idea to keep an eye down here on what units are, are being used in the model. And also you wanna make sure that you start the model with the correct units, because if you start making something in millimeters and you realize that um, it should have been in inches, well, there's really not a great way to go back and scale that model without uh, applying an additional feature to the model itself. So I just want to take a couple of minutes to go through some of the settings um, and where to find different settings. So if I click on the settings button up top, there's system options which apply to the entire SOLIDWORKS application. So this isn't document specific or anything like that. These are your settings for the entire application. There's also document properties where you can edit um, you know, your, your text sizes for drawings and you know, your dimension tolerances and a lot of that different stuff that are going to be doc document specific. So document properties is where you want to go to edit your template settings. So you would open a part, you know, change these um, or open a drawing template, change all these settings and then save that as a template again after you've made the edits and set up your document properties in the way that you want. A couple things worth pointing out in system options. So default templates, you'll notice that if you go to this, these are my, my locations are going to be different than what you see. You're going, you're going to be set up with the default uh, SOLIDWORKS locations for the part assembly and drawing templates. I've changed mine so that my default templates point to um, certain templates that I've already created. You can also change uh, the document template locations that you can access through that new button. So again, if I uh, look at these two locations, this is the default SOLIDWORKS templates, and these are the ones that I've created in this location. So when I click new again here, this is the, the location, one of the two locations, the one that I've created, and these are the default templates that SOLIDWORKS has out of the box. So go back to settings quick. So file locations. So there's there's also a lot of other file locations that you can set up. So bend table templates, um, bomb templates, design libraries, drafting standards, macro locations, all these different things that you can add file locations to so that SOLIDWORKS knows where to go and be able to access those files for these different types of um, files and templates. So if you're working at a company that has a, a standard bomb template, you're going to want to come in here and add that to this list so that you can access your bomb that your company uses. So before I mention the toolbox, I'll show you everybody how to add that. So if I come Rather than clicking on the gear, if I click the drop down and I click add ins, here's where I can add different add ins um, to the current session of SOLIDWORKS. I can either load it for this one session by clicking this box over here, 
or I can load it at startup every time I open SolidWorks here. So I would say that Toolbox is one, if, you, if you're using hardware regularly, you should probably just put this on at startup. Um, otherwise, you can always come in and load it when you're using hardware, but the Toolbox is definitely a very nice tool once you learn how to use that. Um, it's a great add-in that comes with SolidWorks. Another option that I want to point out, so under your options drop down, if you click customize and you go to mouse gestures, um, in here you can set up quick mouse gestures that are contextual to the part. If you're in a sketch, if you're in assembly, or if you're in a drawing, you can set up quick mouse commands um, that I'll show you how to use here in a second, but this is where you would edit that. So you can pick the position of different commands. I have mine set up like this. I think it works great for my needs, but obviously um, you can set up these mouse gestures however you want. And I think by default, it's either set up the four or eight gestures. Um, I highly recommend trying to use at least eight gestures because this is a huge productivity booster um, once you learn how to use it. So definitely early on, try to utilize these mouse gestures and get used to it. So a real quick example, if I were to click up here um, and I right click and drag like that, I'm starting a sketch already. So now I can come in here, I can add you know my sketch do whatever I want, and then if I want to turn this into an extrude, again, I can just right click, do extrude, and then I'm already working on an extrude like this. All right, so hopefully that helps orient the new users to the different aspects of SolidWorks interface. In the next video, we'll start diving into the fun stuff and actually make some simple models like I've made here.